In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his infinite love, mercy, and kindness, allowing us to be in his holy church and sharing his word, which is the only truth in existence, the word of the Holy Gospel that sets you free when you believe and receive the word into your life and into your heart. I pray that everyone who is present here in this holy church and all of you, our beloveds, who are watching us through live streaming, that you're always in good health and in good spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, the only way, truth, and life. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be upon Israel, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? How are we? Good. How are we? Good. That's the way. We thank the Lord Jesus for another Bible preach. It's a blessed Friday evening, 6 p.m. all the way from Sydney, Australia. And uh, those who are watching us from wherever you are and whoever you are, God bless you always, our beloveds, for listening to the word of the Lord and sharing the word of the Lord with everyone you have in your life. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name for his uh, glory for his holy name to be worshipped and praised always. Amen? Amen. All right, before we start, we'll ask our uh, beloved English choir. There's uh, two members of the English choir today with us, and they're going to start this hymn. They'll sing this hymn for us this evening. It is, I believe, it is Eddie and. Oh, there's three people. Okay, three people from the English choir. Let's listen to this beautiful hymn and come back to our topic this evening. Amen to that. It is the Lord who holds us together. Without him, we're lost. Well, without him, we have gone astray and lost our sense of orientation, our sense of direction. All right. So, um, any new faces for the first time ever? Show of hands. First time ever. Welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, there is a few number here. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I hope it's not your last time. Otherwise, I have a red belt in karate. I'll be coming after you. So you better be very careful. I'm a very dangerous bishop. Um, <clears throat> on top of that, I am a good-looking one as well. So there you go. Uh, thank you very much for making it this evening for the, our beloveds who are for the first time here. God bless you. And for the regular ones, I thank you so much for attending regularly to uh, listen to the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right, so we're going to go on to our topic. This evening we'll be taking another verse. We've been going verse by verse. All right, so it um, looks like the um, Song of Songs is going to stay with us for a little while by the looks of things. You don't mind, do you? Well, tough luck, even if you do. There you go. So today it will be um, Song of Songs or Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. The Holy Bible teaches us today. I am dark but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. 
like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Well, last week we had a commentary on verse 4. Sorry if I can stop for a moment. Maybe the reverb is a little bit high. Last week we had a commentary on verse 4. Verse 4 says, Draw me away, we will run after you. The king has brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in you. We will remember your love more than wine. Rightly or truly do they love you. That was last week. We said that the king brought this human soul, the Christian soul, into his chambers. And this Christian soul, the baptized soul, he brought him to the chambers. And we said this chamber is the matrimonial bond where that matrimonial bed between the husband and the wife, i.e. the two becoming one in a holy divine way not earthly way but holy divine way sound still still a bit loud the baptized soul has entered into a matrimonial bond the king has brought me into his chambers she's entered this matrimonial bond with the king being christ himself when the king brought her into his chambers. Once that relationship was established between Christ, the heavenly groom, and the bride, the baptized soul, i.e. the church. So all of us are one bride for the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus has only one beloved church of his. There are no churches in the eyes of Christ because his bride is only one. Since St. Paul says in his epistle to the Ephesians chapter 5 that the church is the body and Christ is the head. Well, how many bodies is to the head? Only one. Since the body is the church, well, the Lord has only one church. You can call yourself Catholics. You can call yourself Orthodox. You can call yourself whatever you wish to call. The Lord will always see you as his own one single bride forever. To the Lord, there is no division because you cannot divide the body. You cannot cut it into pieces. And if you try, then you'll have to pay for it. So now, this matrimonial bond in a divine way where God, Christ, the King is coming to bring us into this oneness, this unity, Unite us unto him and make us one in him. Once this relationship is established, what happens after that? We will encounter obstacles and troubles. Isn't that the case with every marriage? On the big day, the couple are so, they're so excited. They can't wait. They have been preparing maybe for months, maybe for years, for the big day to come. Finally, the big day came where the two stood before the holy altar and the priesthood rank, and they said to each other, I do. They went to honeymoon, and after honeymoon, trouble started. We started encountering issues, obstacles. It is normal, isn't it? There is not one couple married that they never had problems with one another, raised their voices at each other, maybe went away to mommy's place for a couple of days away from hubby or from my wife. Issues happen. So now, verse 5, the bride is saying, after getting to know Jesus Christ, after becoming one with the Lord, after becoming betrothed to the Lord Jesus, he becomes the groom and I become the bride. After this relationship is established, verse 5, that is today's topic, the bride is saying, I have issues now. I have issues after marriage. What are the issues? Let's look at them. 
The phone rang. Just say, I'm busy because I'm with my sweetheart Jesus and with the best looking bishop in the world. Can I hear an amen for that, baby? Amen. Yo, what's up, brother? <laughs> Get down, bro. Let me some scheme, bro. What's up? All right. So I'm an American. Yo, I think I should put my name for the elections and be in the White House, baby. All right. Now I'll leave that to Mr. Trump. I think he will do a brilliant job. There we go. So now the bride is saying, I've got problems. What are the problems? Let's look at him. Verse 5, the bride is talking. I am dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Curtains, we can call them also tents. So I am dark, she's saying, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the tents or curtains of Solomon. Who are the daughters of Jerusalem? We said earlier, angels of heaven. They are the daughters of Jerusalem, the angels. Okay, the bride, the baptized soul is the bride. She is speaking here with the angels of heaven. She is talking to the angels of heaven and... I'll come to the angels for a moment. Angels are referred to as the sons of God in Job 1.6. When we read in the book of Job, Old Testament, chapter 1 verse 6, the angels are called the sons of God. Now the word sons here means belonging to. Like in a way, in a simple term, um, the people of Fairfield, the people of Sydney, the people of uh, America, the people of Australia. Now the people of Australia are the sons of Australia, are the sons and daughters of Australia, but not in the literal sense as being given birth to. You know what I'm saying? But where, wherever you belong to, you are the son of that place. So the sons of God, angels, here literally means belonging to God, the angels of God. But what are we to God as humans? The children of God, i.e. born of God. You see, angels are not born of God. They are created by God. But us, no, we are born of Him. And to say this to you, it is only mentioned that God said, let us go down and make this human being, this man, in our image according to our likeness. That is only mentioned to the human race that God went down to make us in his image. Now the word image is an internal one. So we are born internally from God. Angels are created externally to God. That's why they are the sons, i.e. belonging to God, but we are the children, the inheritors, the heirs to his throne. What is God's is mine. The title deed is mine as well. I own it. So, the most powerful angel in heaven, Archangel Michael, will salute you when you walk to heaven and will come and serve you while you are on earth. The most powerful angel that can wipe the whole world before we blink our eyes. But when he sees us, the weakest form ever, full of sins, he will salute us because he sees God, his creator, in us. Do you realize how precious you are in the eyes of the Lord? Yet angels are perfect, sinless. Yet we are all full of sins, but the angels salute us. And they serve us. They can wipe us from existence, but they cannot. Because their God is my dad. <laughs> so I descend from the royal family. I am the king and I'm the queen. And the angel is nothing but a servant. Wow. Now she's saying, I'm dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. Daughters of Jerusalem are the angels. The word Jerusalem can have two meanings in the original text. Now in Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac, 
same language. That has two meanings. It is Ur Shalim. This is the proper pronunciation of the word. It's not Jerusalem. It's Ur Shalim. It's a compounded word, two in one. Ur means city. Shalim means peace. When you go to Israel, what do they say? Shalom. Now the word Shalom means peace. So Ur Shalim means the city of peace. But it also has another meaning. The word Ur in the Aramaic language can mean the road. And Shalim can also mean the end. So Ur Shalim, end of the road. Everything began with Jerusalem. Everything will end with Jerusalem. That's the starting point and that's the ending finale point. This is where Christ came and this is where Christ will come back again to put an end to everything. All will happen in Ur Shalim, the city of peace and the end of the road. Now the bride, the baptized soul, is talking with the angel saying, I am dark. This is the first problem I have after being connected with Christ. I am dark. Now why I am dark? Because the reason being dark, number one, because I am, since I'm living in the world, the world made me dark because of its evil ways. Since I'm living in the world, the world has made me dark because of its evil ways. And also, since I'm living in the body, the body, because of its weaknesses, it made me fall into sin. Sin made me dark. Sin made me dark. But she's saying, I am dark, but what? But I am lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. What she's trying to say, even though I'm dark, but my place is with you angels. I belong to heaven. I belong above because the one whom I entered into this matrimonial bond with happens to be the owner of Jerusalem. Christ is the king of Jerusalem. If Jerusalem is the city of peace, then Christ is the king of this peace. So since Christ became my heavenly groom, Jerusalem is mine. But I'm still living in this world and the world made me dark and made me fall into sin because of my bodily weakness. But let me tell you, yes, I'm dark. Yes, I'm a sinner. But Christ is my groom. Through him, I am lovely. And therefore, I belong to Jerusalem, to the heavenly realm, because my groom is God himself, the owner of both heaven and earth and everything visible and invisible. So I belong there because he is the owner of Jerusalem. He is the king of Jerusalem and he is the God of Jerusalem. And there is a prophecy in the Old Testament and it says Jerusalem is the land of Emmanuel, not anyone else. The Holy Land belongs to Christ, no one else. He is the owner of everything. But the body I dwell in is making me to be dark as it makes me fall into sin. The body, the lusts of the body. But one thing you need to know, O oh daughters of Jerusalem, the bride is saying, one thing you need to know, even though I am dark, but I never lose hope. I never lose hope because even though I say to you, I am dark at the same time, I say to you, but I am lovely also, but I am lovely. I am dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. I am dark in my weakness, but lovely in Christ, my groom who gave me his holiness and his loveliness. I am dark in me, but I am beautiful in him, O daughters of Jerusalem. Wow. Why am I dark? Because I am earth. And, my, and Christ, my groom, is the sun, S-U-N. When the earth on its own 
It is dark, but when the sun shines upon that earth, the earth is seen so beautiful. What makes the earth beautiful is the sun. You go out, everything pitch black. There is no loveliness. There is no beauty. But when you walk in the sun, in the light, everything looks so colorful. Everything looks so beautiful and so immaculately created. God is the reason for our loveliness, for our beauty. God is who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My loveliness is in Christ. Without him, I am dark because I am a sinner. Without Christ, I have no light in me. And since there is no light, then there is only one thing left in me, darkness. Like the night. The bride says, I am dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Please look at verse 5 on the screen. I am dark but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like, a, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. We said curtains can also mean tents. Let's put it in a different order, in a different perspective. Let's look at it. What we can say now, I am dark like the tents of Kedar, but lovely like the tents of Solomon. Yes? Do you see? Do you see the combination, how, it, how it's work, work, walking together? I am dark like the tents of Kedar, but I am lovely like the tents of Solomon. That's what she is trying to say. That's why the word Kedar and Solomon are mentioned there. And we'll come to it. Why? Why is so? We'll come to that. I am dark like the tents of Kedar, but lovely like the curtains or the tents of Solomon. The Israelites ended up using um, the tents of Kedar. Who is Kedar? Kedar is the grandfather of the Arab world. Kedar is the grandfather of the Arab world. By the way, Palestinians are not classed as Arabs because they are Palestinians. There was a nation from an old time, ancient times, called Palestine. And Goliath, Goliath, you've heard of the story Goliath and David? Goliath was a Palestinian. But who are the Arab worlds? Who are the true Arabs now? The Gulf region, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, the Emirates, all of these are the true Arab world. And usually and normally, the Arabs, the real Arabs, are dark skin. They're not fair, they're not tan, they're a bit of, bit of a dark skin. So, Kedar is the grandfather of the Arab world, and he was the inventor of the tent. Up until his time, nobody thought of making a tent. He was the only one who founded this tent and invented it for the first time. Therefore, the tents are a copyright of Kedar, the grandfather of the Arab world. He made those tents out of the goat strings. So normally, when you looked at the tents made by Kedar, they were black, all black, from a goat skin. They were all black, made from a goat skin. That's why the bride is saying, I am dark like the tents of Kedar, because the tents were black color. But lovely, like the curtains or the tents of Solomon. The Israelite nation ended up using the tents of Kedar. But for what reason they used it? They used it to treat leprosy. They used to pitch a couple of tents outside the city. And they would put lepers in those tents. Now, being black color, those tents, they had them fully sealed. Only a small opening. And once they put a, a leper in there, they would close it. Outside the city, so that nobody from the Israelite nation gets defiled by speaking to a leper or even touching a leper. 
So they would put that leper in that tent and then come and check on him after a week. The heat of the sun would come into the tent and remain inside the tent. The temperature would go up to 60, 65 degrees inside that fully closed tent. Leprosy would be killed by high temperature. They would leave that person in a, for a week, come back and check and bring him some food and water. If they see there is still sign of leprosy, leave him for another week. They used to keep them for up to three weeks. After three weeks, with intense temperature being exposed to, leprosy would start dying and falling off. So what is this black tent of Kedah used to treat lepers? Please follow me. Used to treat lepers. Now I'll take you to Psalm 120 verse 5. It's not on the screen. King David in Psalm 120 verse 5, he is saying, Woe is me that I dwell in Meshach, that I dwell among the tents of Kedah. Wow. Woe is me that I dwell in the tents of Kedah. King David is saying literally, my stay in exile has prolonged and I dwelt in the tents of Kedar. So what does the tent of Kedar symbolize here? The body we dwell in. This body is the tent of Kedar. He's saying, my stay in this body has gone too long, too far. I've lived on the face of this earth for too long. I'm suffocating in this body. Why? Because this body is resembled by the tent of Kedar. Who did they put in the tent? The leper. What is leprosy? Sin. Symbolizes sin. I have dwelt in this body for too long and I have sinned for too long. My spirit is suffocating in this tent of Kedar called the body. I'm suffocating. The spirit wants to leave and be set free once and for all. The spirit says, I wanted to go to church. The body took me to the club. I wanted to praise God. The body told me to swear and use foul language. I wanted to, bring, to, to drink the blood of the Lamb of God. The body made me drink the wine of this world and made me drunk in the lust of this world. I'm suffocating. My exile in this body has prolonged. I need to come out of this tent. Oh my goodness. The Spirit says, I want to walk in the path of Christ. The body replies and says to her, I'll walk in the way of this world like the people of this world. My stay has prolonged in this tent. Since I have stayed in this tent for too long, the result of it, I became dark. I am dark. Sin has made me dark like the night. This tent made me burn inside of it and made me a leper, sinner, sinner. How much longer do I remain in this tent, i.e. this body? How much longer? The Lord came to take me out of this tent. The Lord Jesus came to take me out of this tent. Look at St. Paul, how beautifully he puts it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5, 1. For we know that if our earthly house the tent of Kedah. So we know, for we know, that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Wow. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, the tent of Kedah, this body, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
So when this body diminishes, the spirit is being built. But when the body is being built strongly, the spirit diminishes. That's why the spirit is crying and saying, I have stayed too long in the, in the tent of Kedar. Please set me free. I am living in a dungeon and this dungeon is hell. I want to be set free. No more sinning, no more crying, no more agonies, no more pain, no more suffering, no more betrayals, no more. I want to be free. I want to be holy. I want to be the child of God, not the slave to Satan. Not the slave to Satan. In other words, when we break or destroy the tent of this body, our tent of the spirit is being built in heaven for Christ. Come back again. The bride is saying, I am dark like the tents of Kedar. Even though I am a sinner, dark, but I will never lose hope. I will never lose hope. And let me just say a few words about hope. All of us, at certain times in our life, we encounter tribulations. All of us, we go through dark tunnels at some stage of our life. And when we are walking in that dark tunnel, for us, everything is the end. For us, everything seems to be over. There is no result. There is no outcome. There is no salvation. I can't see the light at the end of that tunnel because everything around me tells me one thing. You're finished. You're gone. It's too late. There is no one that can come to your rescue because everything has been destroyed and everything I hoped for and wished for just collapsed before my very eyes before I even blinked those eyes. But in the most difficult moments of our life, and when we have hit rock bottom, knowing for a fact, using our intellectual capacity, realizing there is no way out, realizing there is no redemption, let us not lose hope that the one who purchased us with his precious blood on the cross on Calvary is the one who calls the dead from the tombs and they rise on the spot. When it is too late, that's when God comes and says, I am that I am. You see, the word went out to the Lord Jesus and they said, the one you love is not feeling well. Lazarus, the one you love, Lord, is not feeling well. He said to the disciples, we will remain longer. It is okay. He is asleep. But then he waited one day, two days, three days, and four days to make sure Lazarus was fully dead. Fully dead. Meaning, no human intervention can get Lazarus out of that grave. No power in existence can bring Lazarus from the dead. Jesus Christ of Nazareth waited for the moment to make sure everyone, when they witnessed that moment, realize it is God and God only who made it possible. So on the fourth day, he goes, stands before the tomb and says a couple of words, Lazarus, come forth. Everyone was crying. Everyone was saying Lazarus is dead. Everyone was saying it's too late now. He is rotted. So he's been four days in the grave. But when the Lord Jesus shows up, it's never too late, my beloved. Don't ever lose hope and say my problem is too big to be resolved. There is nothing too big for Christ. You better believe in this. There is nothing too big for the Lord Jesus. For when it is too late, the Lord says, it's never too late. What is impossible to you, human, it is very possible for me because I am God revealed in the flesh. Amen? Amen. So, don't ever lose hope.
no matter what. Be strong, trust in the Lord Jesus. Even though I am dark, yet I belong where you are, O daughters of Jerusalem. Because my groom is the king of Jerusalem. So I belong there, but I'm still dark because I'm still living on earth. We see this in the narrative of the Samaritan women at the well in the gospel according to St. John chapter 4. The Lord Jesus sends his disciples away to, bring, to go and buy some food because he wanted to see this Samaritan woman at the well. She came to that well. She saw a man before her. He said to her, go and call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He said, rightly you said, because he had five husbands before and the one who is with you in the 21st century's terminology your boyfriend and so true correctly you said all this he said because you've been waiting for the perfect man that's why you married five and he said it's too much i can't remarry and keep on remarrying looks like there is no perfect man i tried the first and he failed me and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth i said i will not marry again it's too embarrassing to face society therefore i'll be content with a boyfriend but the lord said to her you are dark but you are lovely at the same time because the seventh man is the perfect man you've been searching for all along. I am the man. So when I showed up, you were dark because you lived in sin. But when I showed up, you said, I am dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. Because Jesus Christ came and gave me his loveliness. He betrothed me at the well. The well, my beloved, represents the baptismal font, water. From the baptismal font, he clothed us with loveliness. The dress of righteousness, the dress that is all white, without a blemish, without a stain. I was all pitch black. I was all dark from head to toe, inside and out, because sin made me dark. But when Jesus Christ showed up, he gave me his holy baptism. And through the holy baptism, adopted me to be the child and the son of God, the heir to his throne and the inheritor of his kingdom. And he put on the white dress. The white dress is the one which he rose with on Sunday resurrection, the dress of righteousness, the dress of the heavenly realm. He put that white dress on and all of that black tent of Kedar became lovely as the tent of Solomon. Lovely as the tent of Solomon. The heavenly groom, Jesus Christ, took me out of the darkness into the light, out of sin into holiness, and out of the grave into the kingdom of God, eternal life, my beloveds. At the well, I received the garment of baptism. The garment of baptism, the dress of righteousness. And that dress made me lovely, like the tents of Solomon. Now, tents of Solomon, they were made out of gold and silver strings. They were made out of gold and silver strings. When the sun shined upon them, they looked so magnificent from afar. The reflection of the sun on that gold and silver strings, they shined so beautifully, so magnificently, it was a wow factor from afar, from a distance. Totally opposite to the tent of Kedar. This is pitch black, 
the other one shines like the sun so bright so beautiful I in my fallen nature I'm dark but the one who restored me and betrothed me to him made me all light lovely like the tents of Solomon made me lovely like the tents of Solomon I think today will break the world record and it will be the shortest talk ever done by the bishop but since we have time <laughs> please do allow me to elaborate I like to elaborate in music I like two kind of styles in music one is classical the other one is jazz the reason why classical I like because it's just eloquent everything falls into place so beautiful so beautifully but what I really like about jazz if you're not familiar with music is one thing improvisation they improvise so jazz the whole musical is probably two chords ring 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 but you see those professional musicians amazing with those two chords they come up with something so magnificent by improvising and elaborating on those two chords so today I'll make it like jazz with two chords with one chord verse 5 we shall elaborate and improvise to make it beautiful the first time you come to the Lord Jesus and when I say the first time someone might say well I've been a Christian all my life I was born in a Christian family I was baptized when I was an infant and I grew in the Christian family and I heard my parents every now and then mention the name Jesus Christ and I've been occasionally to the church and attended few church services here and then but it is the first time ever I come to this encounter that I've never experienced before where I truly truly feel the presence of the Lord in my life so awesomely I have never ever felt this way before I am a Christian but I was absent from Christ and Christ was absent from my life I went to church for every reason under the Sun except Jesus Christ of Nazareth I went because I had to fulfill a certain duty or obligation but today today I went to church I came to church for the Lord and the Lord only today I feel different today I see myself different today I look at myself differently because the Lord revealed himself to me I not only have heard about him but today I have seen him so when you are coming to the Lord with this encounter with this insight with this realization it's your first time ever it's your first time ever even if we are over 70 or 80 years of age the relationship is renewed I was born again through the baptismal font the sacrament of baptism but the relationship for the first time is renewed with the Lord One of the reasons, main reasons why we don't pray that often, or we don't like to pray, we try and avoid it, or we try to keep it at a minimal. Because the prayer brings you into the presence of God. 
The prayer brings you into the presence of God. When we come into the presence of God through prayer, God in his nature is light. I am the light of the world, the Lord Jesus says. So when you come into the light, in the light, everything is vividly clear. You see, I could be dirty all over, but if I'm sitting or standing in darkness, I don't see my dirtiness and no one else sees it. But imagine when the lights comes on and I look at myself, I am embarrassed. Oh no, look at the dirt, look at the filth. I hate myself. The light revealed all my darkness. Some people do not wish to see their darkness because I don't want to be humiliated. I have too much pride in me to be put down this way in front of others. So therefore, I will hide my dirtiness and remain living in darkness, i.e. go with the flow like a lot of people in this world choose to do so. But when the Lord comes, when the light of the world comes and shines upon me, touches me so, so profoundly, the light of the world reveals all of my darkness. The first thing I'll do is I will cry, I will mourn for every moment I did something wrong and broke his sacred heart. I will cry for that. For every time I broke his word, for every time I broke his heart, I will, I will cry. The first time coming to the Lord, I'm definitely coming as the tent of Kedah. I'm definitely coming as dark. I am all full of sin and sin made me pitch black. But the Lord starts cleansing me inside out. This purification process takes time. This is why we encounter obstacles after the matrimonial bond takes place between Christ and the baptized soul. Because the Lord starts purifying that soul, starts cleansing that soul. That purification process is the obstacles we encounter. I, I get up and fall. I, one day I'm happy, the next I'm kind of empty. One day I'm all for Christ, the next I'm not so sure. One day I'm really all on fire, the next day I am as cold as, the, as Antarctica. Because purification is painful. And the Lord does it with fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's a struggle. The reason why I'm saying this, please, I beg you, when you come to Christ, don't think everything is going to be smooth as. It's not going to be honeymoon always. Honeymoon period is only at the beginning of marriage. After that, you need to face reality. You need to face challenges. You need to face the responsibility of that matrimonial bond. The responsibility. You need to take ownership. Don't run away. Face the challenge and be strong in Christ Jesus. So now, I've come as the tent of Kedah. That's the beginning of the relationship. The Lord starts working in me, purifying me, because He wants me to be as lovely as the tents of Solomon, made out of silver and gold strings. Silver and gold. Silver, biblically speaking, refers to the blood of Christ. Gold refers to the nature of Christ. Silver, blood shed on Calvary. Gold, 
resurrection. So silver, Good Friday. Gold, Sunday resurrection. So when I came black as the tent of Kedah, through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my heavenly groom, washed me right out, clean right out. And by cleansing me from all of my sins, he turned that tent into gold. And that gold is when he gave me resurrection in him, eternal life, my beloved. But between, between the process of purification till the moment of resurrection, we will encounter obstacles. That, those obstacles is our life on earth. Our life on earth. We're living at a time and age. We're living at a time and age where the surroundings is very evil. The world is blind. The world is definitely living in absolute darkness. And what you hear, what you see, what you encounter around you, it is absolutely insane evilness in its core. It is where the, where the Lord God says in Isaiah, you have called light darkness and darkness the light. Today the world is calling the light darkness and the darkness light. They are rejecting Christ and embracing Satan. They are rejecting Christ, but embracing Satan. Laws introduced, evil. Everything that is offensive to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the world is running so fast to implementing those evil laws. What we need to do, what we need to do, we need to be close to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray and I beg the Lord Jesus to touch every heart and bring it closer to him more than ever before. If there is a time that we need to be close to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I can assure you that 21st century is the time of all times. Because all the centuries that have gone by, put together all of them, they come nowhere near the evilness being done in the 21st century. No one here. When the Lord Jesus spoke about the time of Noah and the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, well, what was happening at the time of Noah? At the time of Noah, he said they were marrying, divorcing, remarrying, divorcing, remarrying, divorcing. Marriage was like a trade at the time of Noah. It was so easy as if you were buying some vegetables or some fruits. It was that easy. And at the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, LGBT, the 21st century, Noah's time, Sodom Gomorrah's time put together. It is all happening in the 21st century. It is very evil. Therefore, my beloveds, our only, our only way to salvation is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I beg every young man and every young woman, my beloved sons and daughters, you are here in the church and you are watching us through live streaming. I beg of you, if you are a teenager, if you are in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s, but more so, more so, teenagers to the age of maybe 30, 40, I beg you, I beg you, do not, do not, do not let any one of the world to influence you and take you away from your beloved Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Step on Satan in the name of the Lord. Then step on the lusts and the pleasures of this world and say, I willingly choose to reject you world. I willingly choose 
to reject you, Satan, and I willingly choose to embrace my heavenly groom who came to make me lovely as the tents of Solomon because the world turned me into the tent of Kedah, pitch black like the night. I choose the Lord Jesus. If you are going out with so-called friends and having fun defined in the worldly realm, walk away from those friends because they are not your friends. A true friend in a simple nutshell definition is the one who builds you up, not destroys you. A friend that takes you to the club and refuses to take you to the church is not a friend. He is destroying your future. He is destroying you from head to toe. You need a friend that will say to you, give me your hand because I'm taking you with me to the Lord Jesus. Now that's what you call a friend. Now that's what you call a friend. Any relationships, whichever level they are, whichever whatever color they may be you need to see is the Lord happy with it you need to see that come to the Lord Jesus my beloved ask the Lord Lord give me the time I want to spend it with you more than ever before I have wasted enough time in this filthy world in this ugly dark world I don't want it anymore Lord I want to be the child of the light no longer the slave of darkness I want to come out of this exile I don't wish to live in this tent it has been too long and too far I am suffocating the body has dragged me in the streets of this world in the filth of this world the body took me to clubs and pubs gambling alcoholism drugs men women and you name it enough 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 no more body you will not take what you wish for you will not get away with it anymore body because today i am stepping on you and i'm making you follow the spirit no longer the spirit follows you no longer Christ is not an obligation. Christ is not a duty I fulfill. Christ is your life. We need to live the Lord. And when he is coming as the heavenly groom to bring you in this divine, holy, sacred matrimonial bond, making you one with him and in him, there is no greater reward where you become like God, where you become united to God by his grace and what he has done on Calvary by shedding his precious blood that nothing can buy. Nothing. When you come into this unity, this oneness, the two become one. If Christ is the love of your life, then don't you wish to be with the one you love the most and the one who is closest to you? I'll ask you this. We have tried so many things our way, maybe for years on end. What have we achieved? Where are we? Maybe someone will come and say, I worked extremely hard and I built an empire. I build wealth. I have money. I have power. I have authority. I have influence. I can turn the world upside down. But at the end, I'll say this to you. There is one question every single human being needs to answer before it's too late. This question is not just for Christians. It is for every single human being. This question the Lord himself asked us to have an answer to. He said, what does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world, but at the end loses himself? What does it benefit you 
If you gain the whole world, but at the end you lose yourself. What are you going to give in the place of that lost self? You cannot too late. You can gain the world, but you will never be able to have inner peace. You will never be able to find yourself. You will always be that empty, that vacuum inside of you where you just wonder who you are and what you are and where you are lost. Because the one who gives you clarity of vision, who gives you that insight to the right path is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once we, he cleans you from that sin and bring you out of that tent of Kedar, sets you free. He will give you that eternal realm where you will live in the light forever. No more crying, no more sinning, no more falling, no more struggling, no more aging. There, the smile will never leave your face and the joy will never leave your heart. Never. So my beloved, don't go where Christ disapproves. And don't do what Christ is offended with. Come back to the Lord Jesus. Love the Lord. Live the Lord. Live Him. Love Him and live Him. Six foot one. Brownie, crispy, hair all the way to the shoulders, split in the middle. The beard is not long as the bishop's, much shorter, but it's brownish, reddish, still young. He's 33. I'm 54, much older, not. <laughs> but the Lord, after 2024 years, he's still 33. And he will always be 33. This youthhood, this brilliant, perfect man, perfect God that walked on the face of this earth, that perfect man and that perfect God will always be the same in the next life for eternities. He will never age. He will never change. The same Jesus. But this time we will see him in his glory. In his glory. But the same perfect man, 33 years of age. I can assure you this is the truth. There is no God but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no way but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no truth but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no life but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's got nothing to do with Christians. He has got to do with your heart. When you give him your heart, it is then and then only you have a matrimonial bond with the Lord. You could have been born in a Christian family and raised in a Christian family, but you never gave your heart to the Lord Jesus. You gained nothing. Maybe your father was a saint, but I will end up as a sinner because it is not what my father has done. It is what the Lord has done. When I accept him, he will turn me from a sinner into a saint. He will ask you one question at the end. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? I will not ask you what was your nationality, what was your tribal background, what kind of a race you came from, uh, what language you spoke, uh, which church did you go to, oh, are you Catholic, oh, really, are you Orthodox? No, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? One question. And one answer is required. It's too simple and it's too easy and it's straightforward. Don't complicate Christianity. And don't say, I cannot do it. Because it's not what you do, it's what Christ has done for you. But what is our part to do is to love Him. When you love Him, 
you give your heart to him you make him your heavenly groom where he comes and makes his bride one with him united forever he becomes the head and you become the body wherever the head is the body is and wherever the body is the head is they are inseparable cannot be separated ever so when you walk alone as the body the church when you are walking by yourself remember the head is with you christ is with you wherever you go so don't say i'm going by myself nobody's watching <laughs> the head is with you so when you went in that dark alley you thought nobody was watching well the head is with you when you're in the church the head is there when you are in the car park the head is there when you're in the street the head is there when you're at home wherever you are at work the head is with you the head is with you i beg you sons and daughters mom and dads grandparents oh grandparents aren't they wonderful grandparents they spoil their grandchildren so much. That's why the grandchildren love the grandparents more than the parents. So whatever they can't get from mom and dad, they will definitely get it from grandpa and grandma. Our holy mother, Mary, she's our mom. But we have a grandmother. Her name is Anne, the mother of Mary. We focus on the Holy Mother and we forget Grandma. So today we will say, since so many of our beloved Christians celebrated the Assumption of the Holy Mother yesterday, the 15th of August, and some of us are still fasting for the 22nd and the 28th of August, all of us are one. Doesn't matter, the dates may be different here and there, but hey, we are venerating the holy mother that's what matters but we pray one day everybody uh, comes into that unity where we celebrate the resurrection and the birth and the assumption of the holy mother at the same date but until that day it is okay it's all good we venerate the holy mother through this month of august it's so holy it is so so blessed but let us also remember the holy mother has mom has a mother called anne so when we say holy mother we love you and we love your mother who is our grandmother so now i say to you holy mother with all love and respect if you don't give me what i want i'll go to grandma i'm sure she's got a big smile on her face right now and she's saying to this bishop you are an, what a cheeky little boy you are but since you're my son, I love you, and I will uh, take it as a joke. Otherwise, I will smack you later on. No, no, no. The Holy Mother is stunning. It's amazing. She's amazing. But beyond and above Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no comparison when it comes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He stands alone because he's the only one who is God revealed in the flesh. You cannot compare anyone nor anything with God. God is the only supreme authority, the only uncreated being who has created everything visible and invisible. Jesus Christ is our savior, our redeemer, our heavenly groom. Love the Lord. Say, Lord, I want the honeymoon period to remain forever. I don't want it to only stay for a short while. I'll come to you when I'm good and I'll walk away from you when I am not so good. No, it is a matrimonial bond in good times and in bad times, in richness and in poorness, in sickness and in health. We stick together, we make it together, we hold on to one another. I carry the cross and you carried the cross for me and I'll carry it for you Lord Jesus you suffered and I will suffer for you because when the love is genuine when the love is wholeheartedly when the love is of divine origin we will be together in good and bad times because my love is not dependent on the situation my love is dependent on the person of Jesus Christ 
I love you for you, not for what you do for me. And this is the way we should love one another as husband and wives. Daughter, don't love your husband because he buys you a Ferrari. And don't say I don't love you because you don't buy me a diamond ring. If your love for one another is dependent on materialistic things, then it's not a genuine love. You love him for him and you love her for her, even if you are a pain in the neck. Tough luck. When you said, yes, I do, you just ruined yourself for the rest of your life. So what's new? Nothing. Are you sure you want to take him? Yes. He's got a big Assyrian nose. Doesn't matter. <laughs> well, they say love is blind, don't they? Huh? You become, you regain your eyesight after the honeymoon period. And then you say, what have I done to myself? I thought it was Mariah Carey. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Love the Lord. Come to the house of the Lord always, my beloveds. Remain with the Lord Jesus always. Amen. Amen. One last time. I just, I can't, I can't stop reading this beautiful verse. Look at this. So stunning. Amazing. Verse 5. Where is verse 5? Verse 5. Have I passed it? Oh, here we go. I am dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. I am dark in the flesh, but the one who came to be, to betroth me to him, through his precious blood, he made me whiter than snow. He turned me from the tent of Kedar black into the tent of Solomon, made out of silver and gold strings. Absolutely magnificent. From very poor to very rich, from low to high, from black to to white, from darkness to the light, from the grave to heaven of all heavens, from the slave of Satan to the Son of God. Lord, for this, no matter what I say, no matter what I do, I am indebted to you for eternities to come. If I bring the whole world to you, I have done nothing compared to what you have done for me, Lord Jesus. Then I love this man. I adore this man. I worship this man because in this man who is perfect, the perfect God also dwells. I love him. I love him. Jesus Christ is the real deal. I don't talk about him. I know him. I not only believe in him, I know him. His path is narrow. There's a lot of pain and suffering. But even in the heart of that suffering, his love surpasses all suffering. You know, I lost an eye for the sake of the Lord. It's not easy. But the love he has shown me, he has showed me, the love he has embraced me with, I don't give one penny about anything. That's why it is so easy to forgive. It is so easy to let go. It is so easy to say to the one who hurt you, I love you and you're my son. You know why? Because the reason behind all this is one called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If he is not the truth, why would I be wasting your time and my time? And why would I go through hell if he is not the truth? Well, if I'm a lunatic, millions of church fathers, what are they all lunatics? Who were shredded for the sake of the Lord, persecuted for the sake of the Lord. Are they all lunatics? Come on, come on, come on. But let me tell you, after 2000 years, I know Jesus Christ. I just know him. He's real. Trust me. One day I'll talk about also his holy mother, whom I adore to death. I adore her. She is my mom. I go to her anytime, all time. 
I call her. I say, Mom, your son is not coming. You better come. Your mom, your mom, your son is not answering me. You better answer me. She does. She does. She does. Let me tell you one thing. I gain nothing out of this. I profit nothing out of this except suffering. So why would I make it up? Please, I beg you. Heaven is the truth. This world is a dream. It's not real. Heaven is the real deal. And Jesus Christ is the reason for heaven. In fact, Jesus Christ is the heaven itself. You see, wherever he is, he, may, he turns the place into heaven because he is the heaven of all heavens. When he walks, heaven is. Wherever he stays, heaven becomes. That's why wherever he is, it is heaven. I, with, when I'm with the Lord in hell, for me, it is heaven because it's not the place that matters. It is the person that I'm with that matters. So when the Lord says to me, let's go to hell, I'll say, by all means, Lord, I'm running with you and I'm coming with you because I am walking with heaven. And when I walk with heaven, when I go to hell, I can turn that hell into heaven. At home, don't fight over earthly things. Please. I beg you, don't waste your breath and your time and you say, oh, you didn't do this for me. You didn't build this for me. You didn't buy this for me. You didn't get this for me. All of this is nonsense. All of this is just a dream at the awakening. Everything we have is not ours. But what is our true portion forever is Christ. Then husband and wife embrace one another in the love of Christ. Make him your possession make him your wealth make him everything because simply he is everything love one another for the sake of christ who loved you so much he gave his life for you on the cross love him so next time forgive the wife is upset kiss her with the holy kiss and say i'm sorry honey even though it's your fault, but let me apologize. Because honey, simply I don't wish to sleep once again at the gutter. <laughs> so it's my fault. Please, your president. And don't argue because your visa will be canceled. <laughs> and you will be deported <laughs> from home. So love one another, forgive one another, help one another, embrace one another in the love of Christ and say, Lord, with you on the face of this earth, I want nothing. You suffice, Lord. You suffice. Oh, I am dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. Like the tents of Kedar, Jesus turned me into the tents of Solomon. From pitch black, dark, full of sin, into whiter than snow, full of righteousness and holiness and beauty and loveliness. Jesus. Uh, here is the, the bottom of the sandals. Um, I'm going to show you this, uh, this beautiful uh, doll. See, I was sitting one day. I said, Lord, you're not coming. So, and I was kind of upset, you know. So um, somebody came and gave me a present at the church. I opened it and it was, it was like a doll, Jesus Christ of Nazareth as a doll. And what I loved about that doll was the sandals. It's so cute. I'm going to bring it one day here. So I said, I wanted you to come. You come like in this kind of a form. <laughs> what is this, Lord? 
and 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 there's a tag here it says uh, my friend is Jesus wow it's so cute sometimes the Lord will deal with us at a kindergarten level so this is the depth of theology for those who wish to learn theology if you have an ear to hear let that ear hear my beloved this is the depth of theology so don't say no oh, how come you talk like that no this is love brother love when you're in love you do crazy things bro and you become someone else that you are never that someone this huge man muscly tattoos everywhere 120 earrings here and earrings here he acts like a baby in front of his wife so fragile honey you want something I go oh you're a grown-up man what are you acting like a kid uh, I'm in love brother I'm in love well when God is in love he acts also like crazy the first thing God did to create us he put his hand in the mud the word Adam is red mud who plays in the mud little kids because they don't know any better but God is the source of wisdom don't you know what you're doing God he says yes of course I know well how come you playing with mud he said because I'm not playing with mud I am in love when I love I go out of my way for the one I love and I proved it I not only created you out of the mud and I acted like a kid but I also died for you because love kills the person that loves Love the Lord, for there is no greater love than this, for the Holy of Holies to put to lay his life for the greatest sinners of all, called Bishop Murray. There is no greater love than this. He's worthy of every love we give him, every honor, respect, and worship we give him. He's worthy. I didn't break the world's record today. <laughs> Um, we shall continue with verse 6 <laughs> next week God willing um, all right I ask you this are you enjoying the song of songs you want us to continue with it we're gonna try and, and do also the book of Revelation which <laughs> We never sort of uh, came to finishing it. We're, uh, I think we reached chapter 19. There's only a couple of more chapters. It's 22 chapters, uh, book of Revelation. So in between, we will probably go back to the book of Revelation and try and finish it since we started it a while back ago. Um, but until then, uh, let's ask uh, our beautiful uh, choir again. Uh, whoever wishes to sing. Oh, it looks like everybody's standing up again. Beautiful. So let's hear this hymn from our beloved English choir. Amen. Amen to that. Um, we have a young man here today all the way from Italy. Um, his name is Ricardo, a very handsome young man. So welcome, my dear Ricardo. Bless you. And uh, bless our beloved people of Italy. Put your hands together for Ricardo all the way from Italy. Anyone else from overseas here? Anyone else from overseas? No. Brisbane. Oh, Brisbane Interstate. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Brisbane, baby. Chile. It must be very hot there, huh? Chile, huh? Very chilly. Come stas? Buongiorno, eh? vero? Ah, that's what's Italiano. Pizza. Very good. Netherlands. Whoa. So we got Netherlands, we got Chile, we got uh, Italy, and we got Brisbane, and we got Fairfield. <laughs> Bankstown. Oh, that's a promotion. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, anyone from Liverpool? No, just kidding. All right, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That's amazing. It's, uh, it's so beautiful, you know, when you see all these diverse, you know, colors and different nationalities and different languages. It's amazing. That's the beauty of the Lord Jesus, you know. Um, one is Italian, the other one is Aussie, the other one is American, the other one is British, the other one is...
from Netherlands. The other one is uh, Iraqi, Middle Eastern, Assyrian, I don't know, Lebanese, beautiful, Tabuli, Habib Albi. You know, it's amazing. It's just stunning, you know, when all the colors come together and, and praise the Lord and His holy name. Oh, let us not forget our beloved Eritrean people from Eritrea. Stunning, amazing. Their faith is incredible. You know, Eritrea, Ethiopia, uh, you know, it's, it's absolutely amazing. So God bless you and bless the people of Eritrea and Ethiopia. I know there's been a lot of happening in that part of the region. Uh, we pray for every country. We, we pray for every place that are in turmoil. We, pr we pray for the people of Gaza and, uh, you know, both the, 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 the Jews and the Palestinians. We pray that they find, you know, a, a common ground where they can live in peace and harmony with one another and respect one another. We pray for that because at the end of the day, an innocent soul gets killed. It is absolutely heartbreaking, first and foremost, for the Lord Jesus. And then for people of that, of that soul that, are, that love that soul, that family that lose a very dear soul to themselves. You know, it doesn't matter what your religious background is, what your color, what your race. In humanity, we are all one. And we need to honor that. We need to respect that. We need to appreciate that. And we need to live in harmony and peace with one another. Maybe re our religious backgrounds are different. We may differ in our faith and beliefs. But as the human race is concerned, we are one. We are brothers and sisters in humanity. And we need to respect that and appreciate it. But as a Christian, that's my faith. And I'm proud to be a Christian. And I will never have it any other way. Because there is no other way but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But when it comes to humanity, hey, I will give you my life. And I will honor you and respect you. As a Christian bishop, we know we send uh, help to a people, whether here or overseas, whether in Australia or overseas, there are people that are not Christians. There are people that are not Christians, but the help, it goes there because if they are in need, I will never ask what is your religious background. I will never ask what your race or your color is. You are in need, I will give you my life if you need it. That's it. I won't ask who you are and what you are. God is the judge. I'm not. But... My role here is to speak about my Lord Jesus. And to me and for me, Jesus Christ is the only true living God. And he is the only way, the truth, and the life. And he is the only way to God the Father. He who sees me sees the Father. There is no one else. Amen? Amen. But we need to love one another as far as humanity is concerned. Therefore, no hard feelings when we speak the truth and somebody gets offended. We shouldn't be really offended. And we should respect each other. Christianity gets attacked. I don't attack him. I don't go and punch him. I just pray for them. I mean, look what they did in Paris. Those bunch of losers. <laughs> 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 I just made a phone call to the Lord Jesus. He will deal with the president. He will deal with the organizers. And he will deal with those bunch of losers who try to do whatever. But for me to go and fight and break and burn... And come on, what is this? Some sort of a jungle? Vicious animals attacking? We should be more dignified than this and more honored than this. And we should have morals as human beings created in the image of the Almighty God. You offend me, I'll pray for you. That's my Lord. He taught me to do that. You hurt me, I forgive you. That's my Lord. He taught me to do that. So... Um, just very quickly, a couple of announcements, the most important ones. Um, according to our church calendar, uh, this coming Monday, the 19th of August, is the Feast of Transfiguration. This is according to the Julian Old Calendar. The Feast of Transfiguration is this Monday. We are celebrating the Holy Mass at 10 a.m., Monday, the 19th of August. Um, we are still during the fast for the Holy Mother, two weeks. Some of us have celebrated that yesterday. But uh, this is, again, the old Julian calendar, which will be on the 28th of August. But we are celebrating that on the Sunday, 1st of September. So being Orthodox, we give them extra three days to fast. <laughs> 
I love it when I put more load on people. <laughs> Just kidding. Fast. It's good. You need to fast and pray, my beloved. You'll never regret it. Um, Sunday School Divine Heart is organizing a uh, spiritual camp from the ages of 8 to 16. Mom and dads, you have your children in the Sunday School Divine Heart. Please put, your name, put the children's names in this spiritual camp. Very vital that our children are exposed to such spiritual retreats. Very vital. Uh, our youth ministry is organizing a walkathon for 2024. It will happen on the Saturday, the 26th of October. There is a walkathon put together by our youth ministry committee. Uh, please enroll for this day. It is also open uh, for families with babies and children. Uh, it's an open day for everyone. They can come and have fun in the church premises. And those who wish to walk a few kilometers and lose a couple of kilos, please do put your name down. It's the Saturday, 26th of October. The Holy Land trip for next year is open. And I think you need to put your name down very quickly if you're thinking of joining us for the next year Holy Land trip. Looks like a lot of people have put their names down already. Um, it in, actually in, in, in involves four countries. There's the Holy Land, Cyprus, Romania, and Bulgaria. Four countries, uh, Holy Land, Cyprus, Romania, and Bulgaria. If you'd like to join us for 2025, it will be in May sometimes. Definitely the second half of May. We haven't said the exact date, but it will be the second half of May 2025. Holy Land, Cyprus, Romania, and Bulgaria. Four countries. Please do um, see one of the youth group committee and just put your name and number. The organizer will contact you at a later stage and explain it all to you and answer all your questions, whatever is your concern is. Um, this Saturday, the seven, oh, tomorrow actually. Yeah. Tomorrow, parents with children in the Divine Heart Sunday School, we are celebrating the Holy Mass tomorrow for you and your children. At 10 a.m., please, mom and dad, you're listening, you're watching. Tomorrow, the Holy Mass is for you as parents and your beloved angels in the Sunday school. We need to come. This Holy Mass is tailored for you, made for you. So tomorrow is at 10 a.m. We pray we see you there. And um, finally, the One Jesus International Conference for next year. It will be from the Thursday, 28th of August to Monday, the 1st of September. The One Jesus International Conference will go for five days next year. It is open for everyone within Australia and abroad with limited seats. So please put your name down for this conference. Five days will be together in the love of Christ. There will be Holy Mass services, spiritual um, uh, seminars, uh, contemplative prayers, touring around Sydney, it's a family coming together in the love of Christ. I encourage you to put your name down for the One Jesus International Conference for 2025. Thursday, the 28th of August till the Monday, 1st of September, 2025. And now, if I could ask everyone to stand for the finale prayer. And may the Lord be with you always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. See you next Monday, uh, next Friday, sorry. And until then, the peace of Christ be with you always. God bless.